In legend, the Fakiri are an army of the damned. Their return heralds the rise of their leader from the depths of Grethor. And if Mola returns to the realm of the living, he will rule an empire of blood for a thousand years. I did not take such things seriously until a Fakiri invader nearly killed me in battle. Now they have my full attention. I intend to make them regret it. Speak to the Law Singers outside the Great Hall. Try to find some facts within the ancient myths. Perhaps you can discover what motivates these demons, and where they will strike next. Serve the Empire well. Kapla! Do you wish to hear tales of the Empire? The House of Duras is one of the oldest and most powerful in the Empire. It has alliances that stretch back for hundreds of years. At one time, it was said that even Kalos himself owed homage to the House of Duras. Hey, do you wish to hear tape? Martok was born a commoner, but with skill and honor, he rose to greatness. Not even the stain of having been replaced for a time by a shapeshifter was enough to stop him. When Jempak slew Martok, by the blood, that was a sad day for the Empire. We law singers see history, and we saw great things in Martok. The path he could have led us on. Uh, but there is no reason to weep or spill blood wine, is there? The House of Martok is now led by Drax, son of Martok. Old General Wolf acts as his Gindok. The House represents the new blood in the Empire. Those who want to take what is important from our traditions but look forward to a glorious future for everyone in the Empire. Funny how that new future is starting with a war. When Drex's father was killed by Jempak, Drex vowed vengeance. Since Jempak wouldn't be where he is today without the support of the House of Duras, that conflict has spilled over into a feud between the House of Martyr and the House of Duras. Whoever wins will control the Empire. <laughs> Hail! Do you wish to hear tale Jempak rules with an iron fist? Any who oppose him do so at their own peril. He has had many years of experience as a politician, and with Ambassador Babat at his side, he can sway the Council in almost any debate. And as a warrior, I hear tell there is none who can match his skill with a bat. But as Kalos tells us, even the greatest may fall. Jempak's own house was small and weak. It had no lands and few allies. His alliance with the House of Duras was essential to his rise to the ranks of power. If Duras falls, Jempok may soon follow. <laughs> hey, do you wish to hear tales of the Empire? Wolf was once a Federation officer. Do you know that? He served the Federation for years, 
even becoming ambassador to the Klingon Empire. But he and Martok were great friends, and Worf was joined to his house. As Martok's fortunes rose, so did Worf's. Worf walked a careful path between our Empire and the Federation until the treachery of the Kamekuth, the Undine, was exposed. It was the Undine who caused the strife between us and the Gorn. The Empire invaded the Gorn homeworld to drive out these shape-changers, and Worf pleaded with the Federation to join us. Their politicians refused and condemned us for acting to defend the Alpha Quadrant. It was the end of our Hail! Do you wish to hear tales? My father, Tehran, is the one you'll need to ask about the sword itself. But I can tell you about the Feklari. They are foul creatures, without honor, who crawl from the darkest depths of Grethor itself to do Dread Molar's bidding. Be wary of the Feklari. Those who die at their hands risk their souls. Molor was a tyrant who ruled Kronos in the time of Kalos the Unforgettable. He was so strong that no man could oppose him. Kalos joined with his true love, the Lady Lucara, to defend the city of Kamchi from Molor's soldiers. The warriors of Kamchi were afraid of the Feklari and fled, leaving Kalos and Lucara to face 500 Feklari alone. Kalos and Lucara fought for a day and a night and a day again. The floor of the Great Hall of Kamchi filled with an ocean of black blood and poisonous ichor. As the sun set on the second day, only Kalos and Lucara were standing. They had defeated the Horde and saved the city. Kalos knew he would need a mighty weapon to defeat Molo. So he left the protection of Kam Chi to his lady love and went into the mountains. There he forged the first battle. With this mighty sword, Kalos slew Molor and banished his spirit to Grethel. Molor rages and screams in his prison. He plots and plans for the day that he will rule the Empire again. Now he has sent his Beglari back to Kronos to create chaos and death. They are the heralds of Molar's return. If Molar retakes the Empire, he will rule for a thousand years. And all that will be left of the Klingons is dust and bones. Hail! Hey, do you wish the Fakiri? Like many others, I thought they were the stuff of legends. That has changed. We all know the stories. How the Fakiri came forth from the darkest depths of Grethor itself to do the bidding of Molor. How they raised the land, and how Kalis the Unforgettable put an end to their reign of terror. But now, I must wonder, are there truths hidden within the legends? For some time, there have been those among us who believe the Fakiri were more than a myth. It was not a popular belief. The discovery of the Sword of Kalos gave strength to those believers, however. For if the great weapon of the First Emperor was real, could not his great foes have been real as well? The invasion of this great city by the Fakiri Horde will no doubt give them even greater cause. We must study the Fakiri lore from the time of Kalis, only this time with a more open mind. My father, Tehran, is an expert on the sword of Kalis and the facts and fables that surround it. You would do well to speak with him on the matter. Hey, do you wish to hear tales of the Empire? My father, Tehran, is the one Molor was a Kalis no- Hail! Do you wish- Do you wish to hear a tale of Kalis? I weave tales of glory and honor. 
ages ago, Kalis was in the city of Kidlat. A fierce storm was approaching, and all of the residents of the city took refuge inside Kinlat's strong stone walls. Everyone but one man, who stayed outside with nothing but his blade to protect him. I weave tales of glory. Ah, yes. Many Klingons turn their thoughts to the weapon of the first emperor these days. A Fakiri invasion would do that, I suppose. Put simply, there is no greater weapon in our history. With the sword of Kalos in my hand, I could face an entire fleet and win. And now, it seems we have need of such a mighty blade once more. For some time, the monks of Boreth safeguarded the weapon. Until the coming of the Herc several thousand years ago. They took the blade from us, and it was thought to be lost forever. There are some who say that Dahar, Master Kor, and Worf found the blade. And yet, when I speak of it to Worf, he turns away without a word. Hmm. The son of Moog is here now. He is a stubborn man, but he always strives to do the right thing for the Empire. And the Empire needs the Sword of Chaos now, perhaps more than ever before. Ask him yourself. Perhaps you will succeed where I have failed. I read tales of glory and honor. Ages ago, Kalis was in the city of Kid. I weave tale. When Kalis fell in love with the Lady Lucan, it was there that the soldiers of the tyrant Molor attacked. The soldiers of the city's garrison fled, leaving Kalis and Lucara to face five hundred warriors alone. I weave tales of glory and honor. Kalis used his blade to defeat Molor. He used it to force the Feklari hordes to retreat to the hell from which they came. Many have searched for the blade, but its place of honor in Boreth remains empty. I hear stories that say Worf, son of Moog, went on a great adventure once with his beloved and the great Dahar Master Kor. I weave tales of glory and honor. Greetings. How may I assist you? Fight with honor. I am Worf, son of Moog, Gintak of the House of Martok. And yes, I am the one you have heard stories of. I served the Federation proudly. I served under two of the finest commanders in Starfleet and fought many battles for the Federation. I regret nothing. But when war came between our people and my adopted family, I had to make a choice. The honorable path was here. Fight with honor. You speak of the Fekiri. The Fekiri share many characteristics with our ancient enemies. However, one of the things I learned during my time in Starfleet was that things are not always as they seem. May be that the true enemy is hiding behind legends until they choose to reveal themselves. That is a task for the lore singers. Suffice it to say that it has power beyond that of a normal weapon. Not only can it rend flesh and bone, it can control hearts. To my regret, I found that I was not up to the task of being the sword's master. This is a story that I am loath to share without good reason. However, I know you to be honorable and a friend to the House of Marta. I do not believe you would ask without reason. I accompanied Daha Master Kor and Jadzia Dax on a search for the Sword of Kalis. Kor had uncovered information during his time as a diplomat to Vulcan 
that he believed would lead us to the sword's location. He was correct. We found the sword on a Herc world in the Gamma Quadrant. The sword brought the dark sides of our natures to the surface. We argued over who was to keep the blade. I might have even done the unthinkable and killed for the blade, if Jedzia had not been there to stop me. Kor and I realized that the sword of Kalos was too powerful for any man to wield. It had divided us. It would have divided the Klingon people as well. We agreed, for the good of the Empire, to transport the blade into deep space. If Emperor Kalos had not been successful, we would be there still. The Emperor contacted me recently. The course of his ship would put him in the Senex system now. Be wary. The Breen have overrun that system. Kales is an inspiration to us all, but as a modern warrior, you may find that he needs assistance. However, if you seek the sword of Kales, you must find the Emperor. Report! What have you learned? Hmm. I thought his obsession with the weapon was risky. But I did not expect him to actually find it in the void of space. And so I agreed to his plan to search for the blade. I should have known better. He is Kalos. Achieving the impossible comes naturally to him. It will not be a good thing if the Emperor's obsession with the relic gets him killed. Imperial intelligence has informed me that the Fakiri conducted several raids on classified data systems during the attack. They were particularly interested in intel on the weapon and the location of Kalos. If they aren't sending a fleet to intercept the Emperor, I'll eat a plate of cold dead gah. Agreed. Return to your ship and make your way to the Sanic system at maximum warp. Hopefully, you will make it there before the Fakiri. Sensors are picking up readings of the destroyed Klingon fleet in the area, but there is one remaining ship trying to get a fix on it. It is the Emperor's ship! We are not too late. Attempting to hail them now! Come to join the fight, have you? Good! There's no better companion in battle than a Klingon warrior! We were ambushed on our way back to Kronos. I must warn you, as strange as it may sound, we are fighting the Fakiri. Proud demons! I thought I had rid the Empire of them forever. A mistake I will gladly correct now. More of them are inbound to my position. See if you can intercept them while we get my ship back to a battle-worthy state.
vessel is still heavily damaged. We cannot let these demons destroy it! several boarding parties during their last attack. I would be honored if you would join me in purging them from the decks of my vessel. Very well. Beam aboard with your best warriors and put an end to these dishonorable creatures. Kapla! Senses are clear. You have fought the fic very well. several critical areas. Indeed. Let's deal with them first. Give the crew the space they need to repair the ship, and then head to the bridge.
We'll bunker down and use this area as an emergency station. Chance the Fakiri do as well. They may strike there next. Let's get down there. We can secure the deck and stabilize the ship's power systems before things go from bad to worse. Life support and main power are on the verge of collapse, and we will need their help to stabilize those systems before it's too late.
there will be a breach unless we can bypass the damaged conduits. long without our assistance. We must head there at once. defeated the Fakiri before, and we shall do so again! All demons can stand against the hearts that beats with honor! Oh, 
glorious fight! Come, I would speak with you, warrior. You are a stout warrior and a fine commander. Truly, you know what it means to be Klingon. There will be time for songs of honor and blood wine later, warriors. Now, now we must discuss the treachery of the Fakiri. Though we still live, the enemy has taken something most dear from us. The sacred blade I forged long ago in the fiery depths of Tristok. The same. While we fought the Fakiri here, their fellows managed to breach the chamber where the blade was stored and escape before my warriors could stop them. Before you arrived, Dajar taunted me with his plan. Unwise, but the Fakiri have always been arrogant braggarts and fools besides. They mean to besiege the monastery on Boroth and offer my weapon in ritual sacrifice to secure the rise of Molar from Grethel. Indeed. For my part, I must go to Boreth and put an end to this wickedness. I will not allow Molor to return, even if I have to kill every Fakiri in the galaxy to do so. And you, will you join me in the fight against these demons? Your report is disturbing. The Fakiri nearly killed Kalos and stole his blade. This must be avenged, and soon. The people of the Empire must believe in the strength and honor of their Emperor. I am placing you under the direct command of Kalos. Do whatever is necessary to reclaim what was taken from him. If you can bring an end to the Fakiri, do so. War with the Federation is enough of a challenge. War with the hordes of Grethor may prove to be our undoing. Serve the Empire well. Kapla!